Right, the first question in today's video is going to be answered by Google, and that is, what year was the Mizuno MP001 released? Would you believe 20 years ago? In 2004, Mizuno released a 7-wood. I've got that 7-wood in front of me now, and we're going to fast forward 20 years because in 2024, PXG released their 0311 7-wood. They're both 21 degrees. They both have a 60-gram stiff shaft in them. What I want to know is what has changed in 20 years, and could you possibly get yourself, which is a club which I think is hugely important to every average golfer there. You must have a 7-wood in the bag, in my opinion. The question is, can you buy one that is 20 years old and still got exactly the same benefits as what we're seeing in the modern day version? So the first question we've got to ask is what has changed in 20 years and not just performance wise, visually, I think across the board what's happened is that fairway woods have just gotten a little bit bigger. And in this case, considerably, these two seven woods look like, well, very, very different indeed. And you can see, I don't know what CC their head is on this. Uh, maybe we should have a look on this MP001, but it's considerably smaller. Now, what that means is perimeter weighting, which is quite a, a buzzword in the last couple of years, is limited on the Mizuno Club. Uh, and it's very much a benefit in the modern day fairway wood. And what that means is perimeter weight, and they're really able to push to the extremes. So you'll see the bottom of the PXG club, we've got some heel and toe weighting at very much the edge of the perimeter, and then some weighting at the back as well. What that gives is less torque, more stability, and also will help with launch angle. At least that's the theory what manufacturers would have us believe. But is that gonna bear out? But it's quite scary just how different the size is in 20 years. They've almost, well, they haven't doubled in size, but when you're at a dress, it's a considerable difference. So that is with, that's a 185 carry. Ball launch is high. It's got good distance on it, good carry distance. But this is why I say every average golfer or whatever handicap level should be bagging a seven wood. The modern day seven wood is just a, a cheat code because it launches the ball high. Like I've just said, it gets the ball out there in terms of yardages, fast ball speed. It's a very versatile club. You can play it from all kinds of positions, off the tee, off the fairway, off out of the rough. So it's a no brainer for me and a club that everybody should have in the bag. Now I know for a fact that 20 years ago, that seven wood would have been a bit of a rarity because, uh, well, let's be honest, they were frowned upon until the last couple of years. One twenty-eight ball speed, That's certainly getting out there. One ninety carry, we're starting to get warmed up. I'll carry on hitting balls with this, but to be honest with you, it's a type of club I could hit all day long. It fills me full of confidence and equivalent iron, and I'm not getting anywhere near the same kind of ball speed, the same kind of launch angle, the same kind of land angle, the same kind of peak height. So either way, the seven wood is a winner. The question is, how much difference are they? And I'll switch straight up. After collecting a bit more data with this modern day seven wood, what happens when we zip back 20 years and I get the Mizuno in hand? Well, the biggest difference straight away, and I've already mentioned it, is the profile of the club. I think many of us would have a bit of a heart attack, to be honest with you. If we see in this type of club, it's quite small by comparison. But to be honest with you, my driver was this big at one point, so it doesn't scare me that much. 126 ball speed with a cut. It didn't feel too bad, actually, but it's done a 193 carry. That's not bad at all. We're launching high enough at 18.5. We've got a good spin number. Everything there on shot number one from the 20 year old club seems really impressive indeed. Maybe, just maybe there's not much difference at all. Let's try one more and see if we can get it a bit straighter. Yeah, another good number, 197 carry, 128 ball speed, 45 
uh, land angle, launch angle of 17.2 and a peak height of 105. There is absolutely nothing wrong with any part of that data. It's really, really good set of numbers. And this could be a really, really surprising test. Is a club from 20 years ago going to match up to the performance of one in 2024 with all the modern technology? What will happen? I need a stretch of balls, maybe, I don't know, minimum of 10 of each, and hopefully we'll come to some conclusion. But either way, whichever club you add in the bag out of these two, all I keep doing is hitting golf balls in here and out on the golf course with seven woods. And I really will never understand why pretty much every average golfer doesn't have one of these as an option in the golf bag. Today's video was filmed at Chester and North Wales Golf Academy. As ever with these type of videos, it's very much um, data led, so they don't need to waffle on too long. And to be honest with you, I didn't need a great deal of data either uh, in terms of numbers to hit because it soon became apparent where these things were going. They're great clubs to hit. And what I've got to say that I didn't say on camera, uh, the Mizuno was fantastic in terms of how good it felt, as did the PXG, but perhaps a little bit surprised with the Mizuno. It absolutely fired off the club face. But here's the numbers. Um, if I touch that, yeah, that should give us down below. That's the average um, numbers that we collected with the PXG 7 wood. So just under 200 yard carry, a peak height of 102, um, spin of 3.9, land angle of 45.2, launching at 16.5. They're just really, really good numbers. And like I said, but keep waffling on about, for, for that type of club, a 21 degree club in the bag, they're phenomenal. They do so many good things in terms of average golfer. If you compare them to, yeah, let's touch that, the seven wood of the Mizuno, we lost a bit of distance on the carry distance, so nine yards short or 190, a peak height of 98, uh, spin slightly higher spinning, land angle and launch angle pretty similar. The one thing I will make note of is that we've got two and a half mile an hour club head speed, swing speed, slower with the Mizuno. Uh, not too sure the reason for that, I'm normally quite consistent, but either way, if you added a couple of mile an hour club head speed into this, then the likelihood is you would certainly make up the carry distance as well. So we've got to bear that in mind. I'm not too sure why there was a drop off. Um, maybe I got fatigued just after seven shots, but either way, it's important to point out every element of the data. But you've got a 20 year old seven wood in the bag. Would you be happy with those numbers? Well, absolutely you would, because as I keep saying, they tick every box. So you could play that from the tee, you can play it into, uh, in, into the green, you can play it on the fairway, into the green. And what's happening is you've got a combination here of a launch angle, a land angle, a peak height, and then a spin number, which means the ball is stopping on the green. The debate you've got to have is, is this a type of club you want to have in your bag, depending on the conditions you're playing, because they do flight the ball considerably higher than maybe a long iron equivalent, but that's a personal choice to make. But I suppose the question that we were looking at today was 20 years, what kind of difference did it make? Well, in this case, in the seven woods, not a great deal in my opinion. I'm gonna to go to one more thing before we, uh, before we quit, and that's the dispersion chart. That is the dispersion with the seven wood, which uh, the, um, the Mizuno seven wood, it's a little bit wayward, um, is perhaps all I would say. And there was probably a little bit more consistency. Grouping was always to the left side of the fairway, which was the shot shape I consistently hit. Now, again, that's debatable as to why that happened, but you would argue that perhaps the grouping was slightly better with the modern seven wood than the older. Was that perimeter weighting? I've really no idea. I just want to point out that you, if you're considering putting a seven wood in the bag, you don't have the budget for something brand new, you don't want to get custom fit, then there clearly are other options out there for you to scour the second hand market, pick up a cheaper seven wood and see if it's a club that actually works for you. And then maybe further down the line, you want to make a bigger investment. So hope that helped, hope that pointed you in the right direction. Really fun experiment for me to do. It was great to go back and hit the Mizuno MP001 lineup because I used to love it. Anyway, that's me done. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Chester and North Wales uh, Golf Academy and I will see you all soon.